up guys? So today on the channel I'm going to be reviewing a film which I saw as part of the BFI Flare Festival. It's called Drama Rama and it's written and directed by Jonathan Wysocki. The film is a coming of age dramedy about a group of five drama geeks who all went to the same Catholic high school. They're all going off to different colleges. So they decide to have one last murder mystery slash sleepover at Rose's house. And as the night progresses, tensions rise, truths come out, and friendships are put to the test. I really, really, really enjoyed Drama Rama. Have you guys ever watched a film and thought to yourself whilst you're watching it, this film feels like it was made specifically for me? Well, that's how I felt watching Drama Rama because I saw my teenage self represented in these teenage characters, and their teenage problems were also my teenage problems. And I was that drama geek in high school. I lived, breathed, and slept drama club. I was also wrestling with my sexuality at the time, just like the character Gene is in this film. And technically, even though I went through adolescence during the noughties and not the 90s, which is when this film is set, I still enjoyed seeing the nostalgia of the 90s in this film, like the cassette decks, the CD players, the VHS tapes, and the 90s fashion. The real blast from the past. Drama Rama really does have a very specific niche demographic. Like, you know, every high school has that one small group of students that just are obsessed with drama club. Like, it's all they talk about. It's all they do in their spare time. Well, this is a film made for the theatre geeks of the world. If that was you in high school, or if it's you now, then you will see yourself represented in these characters in Dramarama. And what made this film speak to me even more is that it really does explore the intersections of sexuality and religion when going through adolescence. As a gay man who went to a Catholic high school, I struggled for the longest time with accepting who I was. There was a part of me that just thought my Catholic family and friends just wouldn't accept me for who I was. Don't worry, I was being ridiculous. It all worked out great in the end because I have the most supportive and wonderful friends and family that you could possibly ask for. But that internal struggle is real and I really did resonate with the character of Gene who's played in this film by Nick Puglies. His character really does struggle to find the right time and the right words to come out to his friends and I totally get that. Also something that I found quite relatable was that all five of this particular friendship circle are all virgins. There's one character who's had sex called JD who shows up to drop off a pizza and interrupts their party. But apart from him, all the characters in this are sexually inexperienced. And I found that quite relatable because um, all, me and my high school friends, none of us were really sexually active in, in high school. Was this because of our repressed Catholic environment that we're in? Was it because we were all just uncool drama geeks? I don't know, but the fact that the majority of the kids in this film who have just graduated from high school are still virgins felt quite realistic to me. Something that I really admired about Drama Rama is something that Jonathan Wysocki pointed out, which I didn't ever really think of before, about drama geeks of the world, like myself, that the characters in Drama Rama, a lot of them do announce that they feel most comfortable or alive or most like themselves when they're on the stage or performing as somebody else, which is ironic in a sense that they feel most like themselves when they're pretending to be someone else. And that sort of highlights how the drama geeks of the world, we can be the most insecure people out there. Like, we can be the ones who have the most trouble presenting our true authentic self to the world because it's easier to step into the shoes of a character and be the person that you want people to think that you are than it is to present your true and authentic self to the world. I think now that I look back on my time in high school, I think the, the best part that I played was the, the role of straight lad that I was projecting to my friends to try and fit in with my closest friends and not have them figure out or find out that I was gay. Although how I was fooling anybody is beyond me because I used to dye my hair, I loved singing along to Britney and Rihanna, and I was obsessed with theater. So in hindsight, there were signs that they should have picked up on. The ensemble of young players in this film is terrific. There's only six characters in this film, but they're all so perfectly cast. Nico Greetham, Anna Grace Barlow, Megan Suri, Nick Puglesi, Daniel Kay, and Zach Henry. 
They all feel like lived in characters and they all convincingly portray the issues and insecurities that each of their individual characters are experiencing. How they gel together and bounce off each other's personalities does feel very authentic. It's like they've actually been to high school for years and they've had a history together. All six actors give incredible performances here. As far as negatives go, I don't really have anything major to criticize about this film. But I did want to say one thing, and it's not really a criticism of the film, it's just something that I think some people might pick up on when they watch it, and that is the film does kind of feel like you're watching a stage play in places, primarily just because it's a one location story, and that's justified because it's five kids having a sleepover. But I like that Waisaki kept things interesting, like he didn't stay in one room for too long, he really does get the most out of this house, they really do use every room and even the pool outside. So he does manage to keep it relatively interesting. There are times where it does dip a little, like some interactions aren't as interesting as others, but when it does lag, it doesn't lag for too long, I'd say. So let's ask those three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Yes, I really did enjoy this film. It was quite charming. I saw myself in the characters and I had a really good time watching it. So yes, I would watch it again. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I recommend this film for all the drama geeks of the world. If that was you in high school, if you loved theater club or what have you, you will see yourself represented in these characters in this film. So those are the people I really recommend it for. Or if you just want something that's light, easy viewing, or a charming little coming of age film, then yeah, it's worth checking out. I recommend it. And question number three, what's going to give it out of 10? Dramarama is a very earnest and cute coming of age dramedy which I found more profound than I was expecting it to be. So I'm going to give it a score of eight out of 10. Thanks so much for watching this review, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to let me know what you thought of Dramarama in that comment section down below. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, also in that video description. And for more Oscars, TV, and movie-related content, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, guys. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.